Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the third video in Inductors, and we're looking at the concept of changing flux. So we'll introduce you to how changing flux induces a voltage. Um, we'll think about different ways we can change flux, and there's an equation for that, which is Faraday's law. So you can see in the diagram um, here that when we change flux, we introduce or we induce a voltage, or an EMF, which is um, the term for the voltage. So you can see that when the thing doesn't move, this needle's in the middle, is zero, but when it moves in here and changes the amount of flux, we generate a voltage. It stops, it goes back to zero. We pull it out, it generates a voltage. Forget if it's negative or positive for now, just the fact that it's only when it's moving and changing the flux through the coil that we generate our voltage. So that's like when we're far away, we only have the one magnetic field line which goes through the coil, and then when we're close together, we have lots of field lines. So we go from not much flux to a lot of flux. That changing flux induces the voltage. It's so important that you, that you realize it's the change in flux. Not just having flux, but the change. So when the magnet was stationary, there was no voltage induced. There's different ways we can change the flux. Obviously, this one here is a diagram of a magnet moving in and out of the coil. Right? But we could just hold the magnet steady and move the coil over um, and then back out again from the magnet. So we can move the coil back and forth. Another way we could do it is we could um, have the magnet out of the coil, but rotate it. So as you rotate it, you're gonna have flux which is pointing into the coil, and as it rotates around to 90 degrees, the flux is gonna be 90 degrees to the coil, so that's no, or the field line, sorry, gonna be 90 degrees to the coil, so that's no flux. And then you rotate it again, and the field lines are going to be pointing the other way, so you're going to have negative flux. And so rotating the coil or rotating the magnet, both will change the flux going through the coil. And this is how we generate our electricity. The electricity, in, certainly in New Zealand, um, apart from solar panels that you're using in your home to light up your house, um, use for your oven to heat up your hot water, is generated by something changing flux near a coil and generally the way we do that is we either rotate a coil or rotate a magnet. So this is the inside of a generator, you can see all the coils and it rotates around. And the thing that rotates it, that gives it the energy to turn into electricity is either wind um, or we have water falling which turns a, um, a turbine or we have um, geothermal which is hot steam which comes out of the ground and turns a turbine as well. So all of these are ways of just turning something and the thing that turns is either a coil or a magnet and that changes the flux and we generate electricity. So Faraday's law is a calculation for how much voltage we induce and the calculation for it is um, the epsilon there, the funny E is EMF, which you've learned earlier on in this course um, is sort of the true voltage. The voltage, delta phi, remember any triangle delta is a change, so we're looking at the change in flux over the change in time. So that's really saying how fast is the flux changing. If we change it faster, we, we introduce, uh, we generate more voltage. If we change it slower, we generate less voltage. Right? But we also have to take into the num account the number of coils of wire. So this formula is just for one coil of wire, one loop. If we have a thousand, then we have to times it by a thousand. If we have a hundred, we times it by a hundred, etc. So even though the formula at the top is the one they give you, the one below with the N in it is something you have to take into consideration. Um, it's not given with the N. You just have to know that, hey, the formula that's given is only for one loop of wire. If I'm getting many loops, I have to make sure I multiply it by how many loops there are. For now, we'll leave the negative sign out. Um, it has to do with direction. Um, is it a positive or negative voltage? And we'll talk about that in the next video. So in summary, it's the changing flux. I can't stress how important that is. Not just flux itself, but changing flux generates a voltage. Um, and we can do that by moving a, a magnet in and out of the coil, or we could rotate around a magnet near a coil. That will change flux as well. And this is how we generate our power in New Zealand, apart from solar panels, which work in a slightly different way. So Faraday's law is given by the change in flux over change in time, and you have to know that if you're doing this for a inductor that has many loops of wire, you have to multiply that voltage by how many loops of wire you have.